We have now moved into Chapter 5 of the Processing Textbook, so I'm going to start going through this because this, this begins to explain some of the things that we had uh, discussed in the previous video on the Bounce program that did the Pong game. So let me begin. Let me jump right in. And um, the, so I want to look at this draw function, which is an important function in, uh, in processing. So we're going to be getting out of the introductory material and now into more useful material. Now, one of the things that makes processing really useful is that in this draw function, all the code inside the draw function is repeated at a frame rate. And the default frame rate is 60 frames a second. You may recall in the bounce program, there was a comment statement which mentioned that the, 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 uh, the drawing repeats 60 frames a second. This is why. The default frame rate can be changed um, but let's we'll continue using it as 60 frames a second for now. And uh, so here's a, a simple uh, a simple example uh, using the draw function. Uh, now I'm not actually going to copy this entire simple function. I'm going to uh, well I'll copy it, but I'm going to only use a small part of it. So here we go into the sketch box. Now, what I want to do is just pull out this section right here where we do a print um, the uh, frame count. You now, just like that. Now, frame count is an integer variable. Okay, by default, the number of frames that we have executed will be integer. Now, frame count is an integer variable, and um, it can be useful because we can use frame count as a clock in our program. Well, first, let me just run this. Void draw. Everything inside draw goes 60 times a second. And then every time we go through draw, frame count is increased by 1. So I run this. And you see, indeed, here's the frame count variable being printed out every time through the, uh, the frame, the draw loop. Think of this as a loop that just keeps executing and executing. Uh, frame count increases by 1. OK. Now, so we're printing out frame count as we run through. Set frame count is an integer variable. Now, let me just show you or remind you, uh, depending on what the case may be, of a property of integer variables in integer arithmetic. OK, so let me pull this down here. Let me just close our frame count. Or I'll just pull it aside here for now. OK, so here we are. OK, we set an integer variable x. x is equal to 59. Now, that means since x is an integer variable, when we have x in an arithmetic computation, it does integer arithmetic. So no matter what we do with integer arithmetic, the answer must be an integer. So if I set x equal to 59, and I take x, and I divide it by 60, 59 divided by 60 in, in real numbers is a number less than 1. In integer arithmetic, the fraction, the fractional part of any real number is discarded and set to 0. So if I take 59 divided by 60, it only has a fractional part. It's set to 0. So if I print out the variable x, I'll get a 0. Whereas, let's look what happens. I go back, set x equal to 59 again. Notice I don't have to redefine it to be an integer, because you only need to do that once inside a sketch. And then I take x 
here and I take X and divide it by 59. Well, 59 divided by 59 is 1. And there's no fractional part there. It's just 1. And when I print it out, it there's no fractional part to worry about. It just prints out the integer part, and the integer part is going to be 1. So up here, when I print out x, I should get 0. And here, when I print out x, I should get 1. So let's look at this. Let's run it. And I get 0 for the first time and 1 the second time. Here. Let me take that there. Now, run again. We still get 0, 1. Now, uh, let's, um, uh, we can use this uh, with frame count to count, if you want to, to count the number of seconds that have passed in executing a program. And we may, for example, use that timing variable to do things. We can put in statements that only execute after a certain t amount of time has passed. So let me close this here. Don't save. Let me pull this out here. So we have print line frame count. So every time now uh, we it, let me let me remind you what this does. Right, it keeps printing out frame count. Now. So this is in the loop. Now suppose I take frame count and I do, uh, let me just set another variable. Let me do uh, seconds. And seconds will set as an in, it will set that equal to uh, integer, integer seconds. And um, there, we have integer seconds. Now, on the next line, I'm going to say seconds equals frame count divided by 60. Remember, we do 60 frames a second. And uh, so if I've, uh, unless I've done something stupid here, uh, seconds should keep, should, should increment by one every 60 frames. And then I can print out here, uh, print line, and I'll, uh, oh, wrong parentheses. So I'll print line, and first I'll print frame count. Equals, comma, and frame count, comma. And now I'll print out seconds. equal there, comma, and then I'll type seconds, and then close parentheses like that. OK, so let's run this and see what happens. So notice I'm getting frame count here. And then every time it go, we go 60 frames, the number of seconds increments by 1. So this is telling us how many seconds have executed uh, in the running of the program. Of course, I'm computing seconds. We could change it and be computing tenths of a second if we ch if we want. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll put that uh, question uh, to compute and print out tenths of a second into a homework question. OK. So uh, here's how the draw function operates and how we can use the cycle time, the frame time, 
as a way of uh, timing how what our programming is doing. Okay, so with that, let's move on. There's now we may have things that we don't want to execute um, 60 times a second. We may have items we only want to execute once, such as uh, initializing variables or something. So this is what the setup function can be used for. Now, uh, here's a very simple example of using the setup function. We have uh, void setup print line starts it and then uh, and then I should only print that out once and then it jumps down and starts doing draw and every time through draw it should print out I'm running and that's what happens I'm not going to uh, uh, I'm not going to copy and run that because that's you know this is really simple and oh by the way let me uh, come back up here and save this program so because um, I, I may want to use it later for doing a homework problem that I suggested. So file, save as, and I'll call it uh, frame count. Seconds. And then I'll save it. OK, there we go. Now, Here's uh, yet another concept, uh, the idea of global variables. Now, these particular um, sections of code where we have setup is a section of code that runs once, draw is a section of code that we runs 60 times uh, every second, and um, you know, and the old term in writing programs for these things are called uh, uh, subroutines, and now we might call them functions or other names we might use for them. Now, and we, and by the way, we uh, uh, the the programming language is set up. We can have variables that are only defined inside each one of these functions. Or we can have variables that are defined and will work in every function. Now, variables that will work in every function are called global variables. And we define our global variables first in the code before we run any of these functions or subroutines. And from time to time, I'll default and call them subroutines. So we put our global variables first, variables that are only defined in the particular subroutine, uh, we might define in here. So we might have uh, integer z equals something, and the variable z will only work inside here, or if we put it here, it'll only work inside draw. And uh, indeed, if you go back and look at our bounce program, there are multiple functions or subroutines that are set up to run inside uh, inside that particular piece of code. Okay, so we're, this is going to be uh, useful, uh, but we'll I'll hopefully come back to it later. Okay, now let me um, let me illustrate this this how we can use the mouse and indeed the keyboard to determine what happens inside of a sketch. And again, we use that inside the bounce program. We use the, the mouse to rest, restart the program, and then we use the keyboard to move the paddle, the one user-controlled paddle. So let's look at this here. First, let me run this set of code right here. So let me copy it copy let me come over here put it in here okay now so we have void setup which runs once void draw which keeps running over and over and over again and um, here I have um, in in void setup I determine the size of the window we're operating with I 
determine a, a fill color. I set no stroke. So all of these things now should also be true in void draw. And then we have mouse X, mouse Y, uh, 9 comma 9. And um, so mouse X, mouse Y depends on where the mouse is in the window. These are variables where we read the location of the mouse. Now, what happens if I take this thing and I run it? So I execute. So look at this here. When I first start, you see the little dark area in the upper left-hand corner. So the, that's the default start position of the mouse. Now as I move the mouse, every time through draw, it reads the position of the mouse and then draws a circle at the current position of the mouse during that execution of the draw uh, subroutine. So, this is pretty interesting, right? Okay, now, uh, now let me stop. There, stop. Now the dot then just follows the mouse around. Now, um, void setup size, fill, no stroke means we're not drawing a boundary around the mouse. Void draw here. Now notice here, I'm just looking at the difference between this particular program here and this right here. Size 481.20, same fill and no stroke. So the void setup is the same. But here I'm setting a background. 2004 and then this is so it's executing here and then it still does mouse X mouse Y and draws a circle. So let's see what this one does. I'm curious. I haven't actually executed this before. So let me go back in here, execute that. So here we go. Let's run it. Now notice what's happening here is we just have one circle and it follows the mouse around. So why is this piece of code different than the previous piece of code? Let me close the window. It's because 60 times a second we reinitialize the drawing window where we when we write background 204 it erases everything that's in the drawing window and then replaces it with a new background a new completely gray background if I comment this statement out there and I run the program now it tracks it around and then bring it back now let's let me see if I can move the uh, the the mouse fast enough to do something here so I'm coming back in here here we go no I, I can't see it okay okay uh, I won't even tell you what I was trying to do. Um, okay, now, so the background function clears the entire window. So they're saying be sure to always place it before the other functions inside draw. Otherwise, the shapes drawn before it will be erased, but the shapes, only the shapes draw, drawn before it will be erased. Okay, draw continuously. What I want to do is now connect each circle with a line. So let's see how we do that. And then, um, uh, and then I'll, I'll end this particular video. So let's see what's going on here because this is, again, this is something else that can be useful and interesting. I've used it for doing various things. Okay, here we go. So void setup executes the same way. I avoid draw, 
but I'm drawing a line and I have mouse X, mouse Y, P mouse X, P mouse Y. Now, P mouse X is actually a variable that stores the previous mouse position and the previous execution of a draw frame. The same thing with P mouse Y. So this is the current position of the mouse in the current frame and this is the position of the mouse in the previous frame. So here I'm going to draw a line that connects the previous position of the mouse here, sorry, this is the endpoint, and this is the current position of the mouse. So let's run this. Okay, now if I move the mouse slowly, it kind of appears to be about the same as before. Although you may notice there's a slight difference right up here, right here, right? Right there. Now, what happens if I move the mouse really quickly? Notice we have a position, we have a circle here and a circle here and then there's another circle over here on the line I don't I hope you can see that in the video okay and so there with that uh, before it would have just drawn and I when I did this earlier it just draws the circles with a gap between them now it draws the circles connected by a line. Okay, so let me end that. So, as you can see, um, it looks like this idea of this draw function, which repeats 60 times a second, uh, can be quite useful for doing things uh, in, in, in our processing sketches. So with that, I'm, I'll be finished with this discussion and um, I'll see you next video.